Hi there, I'm Jason Tamerick. One aspect of cinematography that's going to have the biggest impact on the look of your frame is the depth of field. Well, the depth of field is the zone in front of the camera lens in which objects are in focus. For example, in this shot, the depth of field is very deep. Everything is in focus. But in this shot, I created a shallower depth of field so the background falls out of focus, and this creates a much more cinematic look. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at techniques that you can use to create the desired depth of field for each shot. All right, we can define the depth of field as the zone in front of the camera lens in which objects are in focus. So if an object is inside of the depth of field, it'll be in focus. But if the object falls outside the depth of field, it will be out of focus. Now, there are several factors that influence the size of your depth of field. And the first is the size of the imaging sensor of your camera. The larger the sensor, the shallower a depth of field you can achieve. And that's classically why film has always had a much more cinematic look than video, because the area of a 35mm film frame is much larger than the old one-third or two-third CCD sensors. If we look at digital cameras, full-frame sensor cameras will deliver a shallower depth of field than a smaller APS-C sensor. So just bear that in mind whenever you're choosing the right camera for your project. Secondly, you can control how deep or shallow the depth of field is by opening or closing the aperture, also known as the iris. Closing the aperture makes the depth of field deeper, so more of the objects in the shot are in focus. But opening the aperture makes the depth of field shallower. Now, whereas the aperture controls the size of the depth of field, the focus controls where the depth of field is. The third factor is the focal length of the lens you're using. Longer focal length lenses create a shallower depth of field than shorter focal length lenses, which produce a deeper depth of field because of the wider field of view. So if I were to use a 16 mm lens, the depth of field would be much deeper than if I were to shoot with an 85 mm lens. Well, the fourth factor is how close or how far your subject is to the camera lens. The closer you set your focus to the lens, the shallower the depth of field will be. But the farther you send the focus, the deeper the depth of field gets. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. The size of your depth of field is a powerful creative tool that lets you draw and focus the audience's eye to what you want them to look at within the frame. For example, let's say we have a shot with our subject, Chris, reading in the park. If the story dictates that the audience should see everything happening in the park, then I'll use a short focal length lens, in this case a 16 millimeter lens, then position the camera closer to Chris. Well, to create the deep depth of field, I will then close the aperture to an f11. And notice how your eye roams around the frame, looking at everything in it. But if I want the audience to focus on Chris, because maybe the story is more about him than the park, then I may choose to use a longer 50 millimeter lens, then back the camera up to achieve the same framing that we had before. But this time, since I want to create a shallower depth of field, I'll open the aperture to an f4, directing the audience's eye to our character with a shallower depth of field. Well, if I want an even shallower depth of field, then I'll use an 85 millimeter lens. I'll back up the camera a few more meters to maintain the same shot size, then I'll open the aperture all the way to an f2. Now, if we compare this shot with the very first shot we took, you'll notice how the focal length changes the depth in the frame, and how the aperture changes the size of the depth of field. Even though both shots are about Chris reading a book in the park, each shot has a completely different emotional tone. Let's look at using the depth of field in another example. As a director and cinematographer, whenever I shoot a scene, I always consider the frame size and the depth of field as tools that influence the emotional impact of a scene as much as the performance or the set design or the music does. Well, I wrote three short scenes to show you what my shot sizes are and how I was able to use the depth of field to create and invoke a different emotional feel. Well, one scene is very casual. One has a medium emotional intensity, and the third is a very personal, intimate moment to demonstrate this. All right, let's go on set and take a look. All right, so for this first scene, because uh, this is a very casual scene and 
as a director, I want to see more of the environment. I actually chose to put a wide angle lens on or a 14 millimeter lens. Now, if you notice, I'm actually really close to the actors. I'm just over Kara's shoulder here. And in my frame, you can see that I have uh, Kara's shoulder frame right. And then I can see Warren in the middle of the frame. Now, take a note at how exaggerated the distance is between the two of them. This is not bringing them together as characters too much, but it might be perfect for the casual nature of the scene. So for this scene, uh, it's not very intimate, it's very casual, and I want to show a lot of the environment. So I chose to use a 24 millimeter lens. Now, even though we all really, really like very shallow depths of field, in this case, you know, I don't have a first day seat to pull focus. So to make sure that Warren is in focus, I actually opened up my iris a little bit to a T2.8. And that's going to give me a little bit of a wider, a little bit of a deeper depth of field to work with. So I don't have to worry about being so exacting with the focus. With a 24 millimeter lens set to an F2.8, I have a bit of a depth of field, but we can still see the entire office. This choice brings the audience into the world of the scene. Here, take a look at the final edit. So Saturday. You betcha. 4 p.m. And I already have the ticket, so we can meet at the subway station in NoHo. Okay, cool. And I'm assuming that we can't bring food in. What? And Miss Dodger Dogs? That's the best part of the night. All right. You're gonna love it. I swear. All right, so the first scene, we wanted to show the expanse of the location. But in this scene, it's a little bit more intimate. Not too, too much, but we want the audience to be closer into the bubble of our characters. So what I decided to do is I pulled off the 24 millimeter lens and instead I put on a 50. And this is going to give us a much shallower depth of field. And it's also going to really help us pull into our character's emotions. So let's take a look and see how this looks. Do you know why I called you in? I'm not sure, but I have heard the rumors. Jerry, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but you're going to be transferred to the Stockton branch. Stockton? But I've been working here for 12 years. I know, but they could really use your expertise, and I figured that you were the best person for the job. I don't understand. Jerry, you're being promoted to regional manager. Congratulations. Notice how the narrower field of view combined with the shallower depth of field makes the scene much more about the characters than about the environment. We are pulled into the conversation as an audience and our eyes go right to the characters. Okay, so we're about to start shooting um, the next scene. And the next scene is very emotionally intimate. And what I want to do from a cinematic standpoint is really bring the audience really close to the action. I want us to feel like we're standing right there with our characters. Nothing else in the room matters. It's almost like their bubble is right here and I want the audience to be in it. So I'm going to use a longer focal length. I'm going to go ahead and throw my 85 millimeter lens on here. And this is going to do two things for us. Um, not only is it going to get us a little closer to them, but more importantly, it's going to create a much shallower depth of field to drop the background out of focus and really focus our audience on the actors. So what I think is if I, um, right, let me uh, see how this is looking here on Warren. Let's right, us up a bit. Okay. So that's actually pretty good. I think I like how close that is. And look at how beautifully out of focus the background is really bringing us in on the action. And to help add to the intimacy of this, I'm gonna shoot this in dirty over the shoulders, but I'm gonna make it really dirty. So it's almost as if we have to peek around each character to see the other. And that's gonna make it seem a little bit more secretive and important. You'll see what I mean. I'm so sorry. He was only three years old. I don't know how to tell my kids. You gave Champ a good home. You loved him and he loved you. He couldn't have asked for a better home. He was family. And he always will be. You don't have to forget him. Thanks. 
All right, so there you have it. You can see how the frame size and the depth of field influences the emotional intensity of the shot. So just to review, the size of your depth of field is affected by four factors. The first is the size of the imaging sensor. The larger the camera sensor, the shallower the depth of field you can achieve. Smaller sensors create a deeper depth of field. Well, second is the focal length of the lens you're using. Longer focal length lenses produce a shallower depth of field, while shorter focal lengths produce a wider field of view and a deeper depth of field. The third factor is the aperture you choose. Opening the aperture creates a shallower depth of field, while closing the aperture creates a deeper depth of field. And the last factor is the distance between the camera and the subject. The closer to the camera you focus, the shallower the depth of field becomes. But the farther you send your focus, the deeper the depth of field. So practice these techniques so you can create and control both the artistic and the emotional tone of each shot. All right, guys, there you have it. A few techniques to help you improve your film skills. Now, if you really want to improve the quality of your productions, I'll take you much deeper into the entire filmmaking process in the paid course at Film Skills Unlimited, where I partnered with Airy, Audio-Technica, Panavision, Matthew Studio Equipment, Ledgo, and Kinoflow to produce an online training curriculum so complete that over 115 film schools, universities, and film commissions use my program. Plus, I sat down with over 70 Academy Award and Emmy-winning filmmakers who reveal the techniques they use to produce the biggest TV shows and movies ever made. So join over 20,000 filmmakers and learn how to write better screenplays, become a more effective director on set, master advanced cinematography techniques, unlock the full capabilities of your camera and lens, improve your shots with Hollywood lighting techniques, learn how to record audio, design sets, edit, and much more. And as a special bonus, I've also negotiated special discounts on software and gear just for Film Skills members. And as a member, you also have exclusive access to hundreds of projects and exercises to practice and hone your skills. Plus, nearly 2,000 pages of my illustrated companion guides, personal mentoring, job shadows, and much more. So, check out filmskills.com for more information. And by the way, you're also invited to join my free one-hour filmmaking course, where I share my top 10 secrets to achieving a professional look that helped me grow a career shooting in over 35 countries for top studios and brands. So check out the link below to register for my free one-hour filmmaking course and learn how to become a better filmmaker at Film Skills, the online film school built by filmmakers for filmmakers.